Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Friday, March 20th, 2020, and I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Shake It Analytics. Find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Shake It Analytics. Head over to shakeitanalytics.com. Sign up for a free email where we get a lot of the content for this show, as well as give you daily stock ideas to consider, and I stress to consider in your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities finished higher in Thursday's trading led by discretionary and energy. Not all the, it was like a garbage rebound yesterday. Materials and financials also saw solid gains. Treasuries were stronger across the curve, helped by a big rally in European bonds, in particular in Italy. The dollar was stronger on the major crosses, and I think the dollar is probably one of the biggest stories in the market right now, bigger than equities. Uh, gold finished up 10 basis points. WTI crude ended up 24.5%. So we get to this desk this morning. Futures are higher in early Friday trading. Asian markets rose overnight. European markets are seeing big gains as well. Treasuries are stronger with the curve flattening. The dollar is weaker on the major crosses. Following a recent bout of strength, due to concerns about a dollar shortage. And that's why I think this is one of the biggest stories in the market right now. Gold is up 2%, WTI crude uh, rallying close to 8% after that 25% pop yesterday uh, on a report that the US is considering intervening in the Saudi-Russia price war. So uh, in the equity market, I think the biggest story is key levels holding. Now they're holding at different price points and we're gonna show you the S&P 500 here as we always do holding the December 2018 low. If you look at the Qs, which we'll look at, I think, a little later in this show, the Qs are holding their 2019 low. And even the IWM, where I have not had anything good to say for a long time, um, they're testing and holding thus far their 2016 low. So important lows are being tested and thus far holding, right? If we look down here, if this low breaks for the S&P, we're looking at 2,000 to 2,100. Resistance near 2,700. Um, and we could get a face ripper. Uh, in my note today, uh, I highlight key retracement levels to the upside. And this 2,700 level is a 38.2% retracement of the move from the February 19th high to the low on Wednesday, if we assume that it is the initial low of the bear market. The RSI is holding bullish bearish ranges, and Jacob Money Flow is neutral. Let's take a look at our market in a minute now. Um, what are we writing about today? Well, we've first signs of an initial low as that December 2018 level holds once again. Key themes are extremely stretched in the risk-off position. I'll talk about what that means a little bit later on in the show, but we're, uh, we're breaking out the college statistics books here this morning to talk about that. We're highlighting upside retracement levels in our note today. As I just told you, 38.2% uh, retracement is the uh, 2707. Uh, go back to yesterday's show. Uh, I highlighted it there for you uh, a day ahead of time. QQQ is the best of the main U.S. equity ETFs, kind of the, the, the cleanest dirty shirt to steal a phrase from Leon Cooperman, the legendary investor. Futures point to a higher open today. Uh, from a power bar perspective here, still a lot of damage done. I mean, literally, there's like, there are, I, I can't even say it. There, one S&P stock has a bullish rating. One NASDAQ stock has a bullish rating. Zero Dow stocks, right? Go, you want to go pick around through the trash and small cap land? Not really my cup of tea, although I am shocked to be saying that small caps outperformed yesterday by over 3.5%. Big ripper in bonds sends yields lower. Energy best group on the day yesterday up 6.2%. Zero bulls, 18 bears in the energy complex. According to the Chicken Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks, strongly bearish, as are the major indices, and that is a function of the power bars. Let's look at our stock of the day now. Opco, Opco Health, it's $1.47. Let's keep that in mind. Um, but honestly, all the big uglies have been taken out and shot. So we have to look at these lower price stocks. Uh, it's a biotech stock, so it has its own idiosyncratic story, kind of away from what's going on. I don't know if Opco Health is working on something coronavirus related. Uh, you know, this was auto generated. I'm just going to take a look at it for you here. Very bullish rating due to very attractive financial metrics, very strong price volume activity, as well as positive expert activity. 20 factors, very bullish rating, strong trend above the trend line. Weak industry, they're all weak. Uh, if you want to take a flyer on a $1.50 stock, 
at least this is outperforming. It's not really my cup of tea. Uh, I generally don't look at stocks under five dollars. Um, I'd rather keep it to the names where the institutions can get involved and try to ride their wave. Uh, that's not the case here now with a name like Opco. Uh, my Siri wants to jump in here, unfortunately, but uh, I'm going to turn it off. Uh, anyway, Opco, kind of interesting name, auto-generated, uh, probably better opportunities out there. Let's look at our sector tracker now, moving to the major sectors over the last five days. Uh, nice to actually see a little bit of a change of pace. We have a green one on the board. Consumer staples up 3.3% over the last five days in a massive, I say massive, flight to safety. Tech and comms at the top of the list, two of our favorite groups. Materials, uh, no interest. Healthcare, one of our other favorite groups. Uh, financials, utilities, discretionary, middle of the road, industrials, REITs, and energy, bottom of the list. So energy rallies over 6% yesterday and is still at the bottom of the list. Let's just take that into consideration. Uh, and you know what? There's potential for it to rally again today, but uh, not my cup of tea. The fundamentals are garbage. The relative performance is garbage. The absolute trend is garbage. I'm not going to catch a falling knife in energy. Uh, real estate, right? bifurcated there. You want to stay away from the senior living facilities for now. You want to stay away from the malls and the retail REITs for now. Um, probably makes sense to do some digging around. Uh, look for some babies that have been thrown out with the bathwater. Uh, but you can't just blindly buy REITs and think you're being defensive, right? Do the work, folks. Drill down. Figure out what you own. Understand what you own. Right. A lot of people don't. I think in a bull market, it's easy to just kind of buy tickers and buy themes right? without doing the actual work. Drill down. Know what you own. If you don't know what you own, the market's going to have a field day taking you apart, uh, especially in a bear market. Our industry in focus today, retail services. Retail services uh, has underperformed the S&P 500 by 14 and three quarters percent over the past six months. And the power bar ratio is very weak. 36 bearish or very bearish stocks for only one bullish or very bullish stock. Currently ranked number eight of 21 subsectors, and it's moved up 10 slots over the past week. So um, I don't think we really need to belabor the point of what's going on in retail land, right? Uh, nobody's shopping. Stores are closed. I, I live not too far um, uh, from a premier mall facility, everything that would, you know, would be considered an A mall. Uh, in this country, and um, the parking lot's empty. Okay, Tiffany, Gap, right? Their stores are empty. Carvana, a little bit of a different play, but you get the point. All very bearish stocks. We want to stay away from them. Taking a look at the REIT now, the uh, the ETF rather, XRT, Com Discretionary. It's a retail ETF, neutral rating, weak trend below that declining long-term trend line and been underperforming since January. So here's what's interesting to me. There's been no reason to be involved in the retail space since the beginning of the year, right? This didn't just come upon us with coronavirus. It's been underperforming since the beginning of the year. Okay. You should have been, if you were a retail investor, meaning you're investing in the retail space, you should have been out of here long before this happened. Now it's just intensifying. But you needed to be out of there. This is why the relative strength is so important. It would have gotten you out. Let's take a look at what's trending now. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. DXC, no real news. Rebounds. 33% on the day yesterday, 33.94% to be exact. Stock is still down 68% year to date. OKE, been a volatile name. There's not a ton of company specific news out there, right? Like everything is trading thematically back and forth, massive dislocations because of what's gone on here with the coronavirus, right? You, you know, CPRI, Capri, right? Retail name. Caught a bit of a bounce yesterday, but uh, eh. I mean, look at the moves we're having here. Who's trading this stuff? HIG is an insurance name. No real news, up 27%. CSEE, 25% to the good. Nothing really company-specific driving any of this stuff, folks. WEC, down 13.5%. No news. 
ED, utility stock, down 13%. I guess investors are feeling a little bit better. Uh, I honestly think we're going to see a big rally. I think, I think that 2,700 on the S&P 500 is very much in play. Uh, and actually wouldn't be surprised to see a 50% retracement that takes us back to around the 2,800 level. I don't trust it. You get massive rallies in bear markets, right? After the 1987 stock market crash, S&P 500, the market rallied 15% in two days, and it was a trap. Eventually went down to retest. History says we're going to get a rally and then a retest. And what we've been looking for is a less intense low on that retest. Um, you know, maybe a good opportunity on a big rally to open up bearish positions in some of these names that are going to have a really hard time coming back, uh, as well as, uh, you know, AWK reported earnings. That was the only one with company-specific news out yesterday. Uh, the volatility is here for a while, folks. We, we've been saying that for two weeks. If you've been reading our notes, uh, we've said to expect two-way volatility. I don't think we're out of the woods. Uh, signs are pointing to we've made an initial low. Now we need to watch. I mean, think about what we're going to do. And part of the reason I think we've made that initial low is because risk off is massively oversold. Uh, looking at the equal weight discretionary relative to equal weight staples, right? Um, this is the 200 day moving average. This is a, a quaint little consolidation that we dropped out of. Um, you can see that we're massively oversold by the RSI, but how oversold? I really wanted to get a sense and drill down on how oversold some of these relationships are. And just to give you a sense, if we use the 200 day moving average and then apply some statistical type analysis like Z scores, right? Standard deviations. Uh, this ratio is 5.3 standard deviations below its 200 day moving average. Think about that. Think about your, 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 when you were in college and you took a stats class and you drew that bell curve in your notebook and you put the mean in the middle, right? And you drew out on the sides one and two standard devi one, you know, one and two standard deviations, one, two, three, right? You never really went beyond three standard deviations from the mean, right? 5.3, folks. And that's up from more than negative six a couple of days ago for this group. Right, and it's across the board, right? If we look at uh, if we look at you know high yield relative to treasuries, five point three standard deviations below its trend, below its S two hundred day moving average. If we look at uh, high beta versus low volatility, four standard deviations below its two hundred day moving average. So fear is stretched, risk off is stretched to the downside in a massive way. I mean, numbers we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, so I do think we could start to be, I think we could start to see the interim rally here. Uh, where it goes, I have no idea. We wanna stay nimble. Uh, if you are going to start nibbling on ideas, manage your risk. Really, really important to be managing risk in this environment. QQQ is the cleanest dirty shirt, right? I'm not showing you a five-year chart here. I'm not showing you the 18 lows. This is just the lows from June, 2019 for the Qs. Pull back. We're holding this 170 level. Small, well, at least lower highs for the RSI and massive outperformance. So I think if you are going to look for exposure, I think individual names are hard in this environment. You see the 30 plus percent moves up and down. I think if you want to start to wade back into the market, I don't hate the idea of using ETFs to start to wade back into the market until the individual names start to to settle down uh, and you can actually start to look at what companies earnings potential could be coming out of this right you know start to get the stories right you just you're it's massive speculation at this point you know i think if you want to add some exposure for rebound nothing wrong with using the etfs in my opinion i think it's a really really good idea actually uh and if you're going to look at the market-based etfs i think the qqq is the cleanest dirty shirt and like i said i think the biggest story in the market right now is not equities i think it's this dollar rally it's a dollar rip, really, and it's across the board against all currencies. Uh, why does this matter? Well, because a lot of countries uh, fund their debt, dollar-denominated debt, uh, number one. Number two is people are hoarding cash. Right? Liquidity is tight. You've seen it. We've talked about it. Even treasuries have pulled back. People are hoarding cash. It's a sign of fear. It's another indicator that we're watching uh, here in the marketplace. So uh, we're going to keep an eye on it. 
It's going to wrap us for today. Take a test drive. I'll be back on Monday.